Hello everyone, today we talk about the origin hypothesis of the Serbs, quite an odd topic, as you know, this is one of the <laughs> ones that I'm making, I, I avowed that just to, you know, get tons of views, because I know, right, there is nothing wrong with that, that, that it's gonna happen, right, it's one of the mm, uncomprehensibly uncontroversial topics that when you um, used to post uh, stuff on Facebook groups, etc., talking about it, etc. There is always, you know, uh, uh, the third war war breaking <laughs> out. For again, I, I don't think uh, any valid reason. Uh, in many ways, even though there is, interestingly enough, a historical explanation. Right, there is nothing easier to, let's say, to understand somebody's political cultural background from their their historical opinions, in a way. Um, there are different reasons actually why I make this video. First of all, I, uh, I'm interested in Serbian history for, let's say, personal and also in part professional reasons and also because I never made so far a video specifically dedicated uh, to medieval Serbian and we'll have to, to start, in fact, now. I would like to go chronologically, and that's why I start with that. I think I made, actually, some videos about Serbia, just uh, either in comparative uh, fashion. You can easily find my, you know, there, there is the search function in my content, videos about Serbia, whatever, with other countries in, in Europe and medieval times, and also something about the Serbs as Byzantine auxiliaries and things like that. But of course, I will have to cover in, in, in detail everything, uh, as I plan to do for every people, any country in Europe, at least for medieval times, but as you know, we cover also other um, periods. And um, this is indeed the, uh, the first time we start with a, with a video uh, about Serbia specifically and just probably talking about it more I in the future. Probably, so, why this specific topic as well? I think I never made a video on the origin uh, hypothesis, especially on some people, if not something about the Romanians in in a late antique perspective, migra late antique migration era, era perspective that I made last year, in fact. Um, and why is this topic controversial? Well, the, the, the reasons are beyond the uh, historical time span that we're going to discuss today. But probably at the end of the video I will explain to you better why this seems to be the case, or at least what, what is my experience in having discussed the stuff on the internet. And again, in fact, this is not a matter of, you know, being Serbian or not, or having prejudices about uh, any country or whatever. This is simply, you know, as, as I interpret history in a universal fashion, I think there is a truth uh, and the, the point is not really knowing the truth because it's impossible in absolute terms, but at least getting closer and closer to it. And so everything I discuss on this channel is fundamentally put on this, this spectrum that I hope to make converging towards the truth, let's say, in, with all my f fault, etc. And so, and because nobody's perfect. Um, but as we'll say, more of that later, I will lure you at least at the end of the video for this. And so what's the deal? Well, the Serbs trace their history to the 6th and 7th century southwards migration of the Slavs. We made a video just recently about the, the broader topic. We talk, we talk also about Croatia, as the Croats here are kind of twinned with, with the Serbians uh, in the, at least in this problem of the settlement and then Maybe we'll talk about also about the differentiation of these two peoples historically, why it happened, what, what we realize um, in general. But this this first statement already uh, is object of controversy for, for some reason because the point is that you know this is the in fact the, I I don't think there is anything like mainstream anything nor history or politics or opinions or whatever. But let's say this is the most accredited historiographical. Um, in fact, interpretation on the origins of the Serbs, right? Uh, they were essentially Slavic peoples migrating uh, from their ancestral homeland, 
into different areas of Europe, central, eastern, and southern, like in this case, uh, Europe. And the main object of controversy for political reasons is that um, the, the idea that, that the political identity or the ethnic or cultural identity or national identity of the Serbs is, as you know, for m more recent uh, historical issues, kind of a hot topic. Uh, it, and it shouldn't be, again, because there, there's not really any any reason for which it should should be even a problem, right? One thing is the relation between peoples, another thing is properly their history. And it's really a country that went through pretty harsh times in medieval times, in modern, modern era and the contemporary era, mostly because of the Ottoman conquest and the massacres, etc. And uh, also, actually, the right genocide, right? That the, the Serbs suffered during the 20th century. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of people massacred. Think about the, the creation of Stasha's and all these things during World War II. So it's a pretty dark time. And it's obvious that um, a people that was traditionally kind of, you know, lagging behind because of essentially this multi-century Ottoman subjugation and resistance against it, that eventually came on the fore uh, first. Actually, Serbia was more or less autonomous since 1815, but it's only with the Treaty of Berlin and eventually the Balkan Wars that it achieved some. And then World War I arrived, and so that there is Yugoslavia later. So a lot of big issues. So it's not easy right, to, to leave with, with a pass of this kind. Right, but this has nothing to do with what happened before. Right, this shouldn't say uh, it, it. It would always shape the idea that you have of the past. But this has nothing to do with scientific evidence. The problem that makes this all controversial is that, as for most peoples of the time, especially in an era like the Balkans, at least was fortunately documented in part, at least in the partial way the Byzantines, in fact, would do. Um, uh, it, 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 there is no evidence, right? There, are, uh, there is hardly any evidence, and the few one that we have is kind of sketchy uh, uh, at best, and we there are just essentially a, a bunch of conjectures about how the, in this case, the, the, the Serbian settlement occurred. So that some, especially ethno-nationalists, uh, and again, I, I know, I, I was about to get married with, with a Serbian archaeologist, by the way, it didn't happen. And she was herself who actually told me, you know, look, I already knew the thing, but she considered as a Serb, actually, the Slavs as invaders. Well, th there was all an, uh, an idea about it, that about her, that I will not, that she believed, that I will not tell about. So the problem was, th there was some other problem behind that, and it was due, in part, to the same issues that I was listening about before, but at least she understood, as many Serbians uh, actually do, without any problem, that of course the, mm, you know, the, 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 the construction, if you want to, I don't know how you want to term it, the, 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 the ethnogenesis, this better sounding term, of the Serbs is something complex but serious, and it should be treated seriously from a, from a historical um, point of view. Uh, well, there are many other people, again, not because they're Serbians, but because they're ethno-nationalists that believe, that delude themselves as all ethno-nationalists do, because they, they don't know that basically ethno-nationalism is a radical leftistic ideology born in, in contemporary Europe for the fourth estate to emerge at the detriment of European tradition. Um, they believe that, no, it's not true. The Serbs had to exist before, right? Not just as a people, because it's obvious that the Slavic migrations actually came to be probably minoritary from a demographic point of view on the pre-existing populations. But this has nothing to do with the Serbian identity that did not exist. And we have no proof whatsoever that it existed before that time, right? Uh, and this is the issue, right? In other words, all the time, you see, by experience, I posted for years uh, this videos on Facebook groups, and I touched some of the most controversial topics in, in at least in medieval history, as you know, I, I talk about violence, bloodshed, war of all kind, and more or less you have the 
the mob of, of the Facebook groups that kind of says, okay, and at the only time, right, it could go on, I could post hundreds of, of these videos, but the only time there was any issue whatsoever with somebody having to behave like, uh, you know, in, in a very indecent fashion, always being, you know, kind of aggressive, problematic, it was, it's not just about the Serbians, it was also other peoples that, you understand, have issues, right, the Balkans, seem to be full of, of, of this and you know it because just if you have been on YouTube and you have checked the comments like every um, millennial uh, knows this right having looked at this stuff on the internet the only thing that get discussed on history videos under history videos especially in the tens of the 2000s was always race ethnicity nationalism who had it longer all these kind of things and, and so the only time I would get, especially, um, it's not because I, I was being criticized or it was much about the topic, it was by default. The only fact that in the air there was this topic that would have to create problems, right? Where problems, again, should not exist. I've never met this uh, basically in any other area in Europe. right? This is mostly mostly a, a group that encompasses loosely the Balkans, Turkey, Partially also the Caucasus, Greece. Th th that's the the explosive area. That whatever you, you want to touch these topics, there is almost a kind of a crystallized, uh, uncompromising, um, sclerotic, dogmatic vision emerging from at least a part of these people. Again, I've I've, I've found some of the most open-minded, intelligent, uh, educated, nice, courteous. Um, open probably to dialogue capable of communicating people from these countries that also are pretty much ashamed of, of this issues um, but that also must be understood in the sense because they do live in countries that have that heavy past of in fact we, we invented the term balkanization just to, to explain this essentially dramatic political ethnic uh, at times in fact also religious national fragmentation in, in areas that again had it v very differently mostly because of the ottoman domination for, from the rest of europe right and sadly enough the balkan question is not over yet right it's it's been open it's always been open from centuries and it's not really being settled by anything it's not not being settled by world war the first or world war the second or the disgregation of yugoslavia and, and other things, uh, as you know, and so it, sometimes there are just harsh feelings and nothing else. But I that's why I try to make these videos by simply listing what I quite modestly began to, to learn. And maybe I'm, I'm sure that there is an enormous amount of stuff to, to talk about re regarding this aspect. And that's in fact my my attempt to to even starting from somewhere, right? And that's I, I think it can't hurt, right? Because if you really want to heal. This kind of things. I think that history is the best medicine in absolute terms. You can't really think that a person can become politically, militarily, or socially uh, literate anywhere in the world if they don't know history. And right? this is the greatest problem of everybody anywhere. Right? That ignorance is never ex an excuse. Never. Right? So if you don't know history, you're going literally to remain a child forever like Cicero said, because, again, you have literally no idea of the world you live in, and you, you, you have a complete uh, misassessment of how reality works in the first place, in, in, in those dimensions that are the ones that actually matter, right? Because you individually are virtually insignificant compared to to the world, right? And so if you want to navigate, your, navigate yourself in it, you should at least know something about it. So in other terms... Uh, the main deal that, that I've in, about this this criticism etc is, is the fact that the, the, there is a properly a uh, it, it's impossible to accept for somebody that their own people and again it's ridiculous because we're talking about a political identity connected to ethnicity as if you know peoples were monolithic blocks genetically or culturally or whatever that existed before anybody else to say we were here first so nobody can claim anything about anything um, it's all about us it, it, it's ridiculous especially 
in many ways, and for instance, with the same Serbia that actually emerged historically from an area that was, in fact, much more Western uh, up to the Adriatic than the modern country that was kind of more like a frontier area for most of medieval Serbian times than than an actual national core land. So there is probably no logic behind many of these assessments. And in fact, and sadly enough, there are also serious and scientific uh, issues with some proponents, especially of the autochthonous hypothesis, as we will see now, that still exist, right? Because, yes, you don't emerge from, Ottom you know, a half of a millennium of Ottoman domination uh, in a normal state, right? Also in terms of historiographical development, properly of, of awareness, etc. So these are harsh words, but they are real, right? And this is just showed by... I, I've been working... Uh, as, a, as a PhD, we had um, students also from the Balkans, our university. We, we saw how they work. It, it's different. It's a different story. It's a different background. They have another idea of reality. And unfortunately, it's not really, you know, to the same levels of, of Western, uh, you know, the rest of Western countries. And this is, uh, however, also mirroring uh, a, an actual effort that we've seen as well in making things work. Right, because just even from a historiography, it's not even the uh, objectively the lesser documentation and more uh, also even the destruction of the sources. I mean, the Ottomans did something atrocious in the process, but it's it's there is no real conspiracy. It's it's just that um, properly an awareness and even just a dialogue between these peoples has to to begin. My my wife to be would have, for example, said. I used to make at the time those videos about the Ottomans. She said, I don't want to know anything about the Ottomans. The question is, how can you study even your own history as a Serb if you don't study the Ottoman Empire? Right? It was just this rejection, this refusal of, of the past, which is extremely painful because she had also been under the bombs as a person. So you, may, you have to understand reality um, for what it is, for how people think things and why. And this is what you know, you'll always try to dig into, and, and, and unfortunately, not everybody is is in the conditions of being ready to accept the challenge, and that's also the reason why I didn't actually get with that girl in the end, which also broke my heart in the process, because I understood it was a limit, or at least a limit that she put artificially to for, for no reason, that does really resemble a bit the same attitude in, uh, in, in comparison, because... And, and I found it there, as I, I, I never found it anywhere else, right? Uh, Ethno-nationalism is, is present everywhere, but it's different. Like Russians, I don't know, think in a different, completely different way. Germans in a completely different way. Italians in a completely different way. They all have, because they all have a different history. And yet, this, this is not to be used to, to make moral relativism. On the contrary, when you come to understand the differences, you also can't afford to judge them especially if you have the, the historical competence and, and background. Um, so, various historical authors mentioned names of the Serbs in different, uh, in different variants, right? So, mm, this is associated also to the Serbs, as we will see, essentially in, in Lusatia, that is the central European origin hypothesis, so the Serbi. Right, Serbia, Serbi, uh, Cervetsis, Cervetsis, Gentis, Surbiorum, Surbi, Sorabi, Soraborum, Sorabos, Surpe, Sorabisi, Sorabiot, Sarbin, Svrbien, Serbians, Sorbi, Sirbia, Sribia, Zirbia, Zribia, Zuberland, land of the Serbs, Surbia, Serbulia, slash, Sorbulia, etc. Um, just to say how even just linguistically and historiographically and phytologically terms can change, but we, we they are mostly referred to the actual other Serbs or uh, or Sorbs. And um, there are also, however, and this is what polarized mostly the attention regarding to the origins of the Serbs, some references of the, as we'll see now, the Serb boy, in 
most notably in the area of Asiatic Sarmatia in the Caucasus, just north of the, of the Caucasus. Um, that is the favorite topic of instead of the Iranian hypothesis uh, supporters, but the methods we'll see now, and it's very fascinating because probably it's it's uh, I, I you know this is the problem. We we can't just want to believe that if we want, right? We don't have hardcore radical self uh, evidence, right, of of certain connections, but. It wouldn't be strange, right? We have to mostly reason in, in within the the realm of plausibility. Now, um, there have been multiple attempts to connect, in fact, the Serb people to the to this um, Caucasian Sarmatian group. Um, so the early historical mentions of an alleged Serb ethnonym, in fact, in, in the Caucasus, are, famously enough, Pliny the Younger, in his work Pliny Cecili Secundi Historia Naturalis, we are in the 1st century AD, 69-75 AD, and the um, geography of Claudius Ptolemy, the Hellenic scientist and geographer of the 2nd century, around 175 AD, will respectively say that the Serboi lived near the Sumerians, so presumably on the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. And in fact, the Serb boy or slash Seer boy, who pres presumably lived, in fact, behind the Caucasus, I mean, from Ptolemy's perspective, north of the Caucasus, in the interland of the Caspian Sea, that is just east of it. Um, so these were areas that at the time were inhabited mostly by Sarmatians. Right, that are also think about the Alani, think about the specifically those that also invaded the Roman Empire. Think about Arian, the tactic against this ferociously, basically the the hardest core of Indo-European warrior uh, mounted warriors, um, equestrian skills, solar, probably religion, etc. That we made a video on about the the Alans those were really something else and you have no idea how much influence we are as a people in, uh, as Europeans in general because of of the Alani and their their impact on the migration era is dramatically overlooked also in the development of properly of chivalry heavy cavalry both from an ideological and technical uh, point of view uh, then there are other uh, similar names to the to the Serbs that somebody has wanted to connect to to the peoples from from ancient times. In fact, in the same book where uh, where he 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 mentioned people named Serboy, Claudius Ptolemy also mentioned a city named Serbinum in Pannonia, and so that's kind of the the greatest proof of the fact that um, this, uh, you know, there would have been allegedly a, a Serb presence near, fundamentally to, uh, this is just a bit actually north of the traditional Serbian boundaries, but still close, right on the Danube, fundamentally on, on uh, close to the Sava too, um, in Pannonia, that incidentally was also, as you know, bordering that corridor between, in fact, the Danube and Dacia, it was inhabited by the Yazijas, and was a bit like, um, you know, the ultimate, the, the westernmost point of arrival of the Sarmatian tribes that pushed mm, uh, from the east and that carried out raids, uh, also in the early Roman imperial times. And, and so, Somebody said, you know, I'll look, see what those, those Serboi that are documented north of Caucasus were already present, probably because of some group um, moved there, at least in this time, in the area where the eventually the Serbians would have been documented, as we'll see much later. And so the Serbs already existed there. You see, there is not even, like, even if we have no proof of that, I, I, I think it's absolutely normal to, to think that, yeah, why not? There, there would have surely been some 
groups, some especially war bands, etc., that would move from even from north of the Caucasus to that Sarmatian corridor on a regular basis. This is what they normally did. They were extremely mobile. Um, th this is true also for m more sedentary peoples like the Germans. They, they were they had war bands uh, everywhere, right? Fighting the Romans or fighting for the Romans. Um, so, why not? Yes, it's possible. What the hell does this have to do with the Serbs? Like, do we have any evidence there was a people there in late antiquity and early medieval times that, that stresses this political continuity with the Serbs somewhere in the area? No, right? Uh, first of all, because just the area was controlled by other peoples uh, that had a consistency on their own. I mean, I don't even have to list how many Goths or Japids or, or Longobards crossed the area. Um, and, and also how many times the Romans actually m retained control of important parts of those areas, within, properly within the, the boundaries of the empire. The, the early medieval Serbs appear to have settled for the first time in a shelter area in the mountains, in the Dinaric Alps, um, that basically have very few to do with, the, with Serbinum, even just geographically, as is shown by the map. So, similar names can happen, right? By the way, the etymology of the Serbs would be the same uh, in, in Indo-European language, the same one of Latin servare, servare which means literally to, to watch over, to control, to preserve. That was a very Indo-European name, considering that uh, at the time that those peoples were shepherds and controlling their uh, their uh, cattle and um, watching over them, as a matter of fact. This is the etymological, linguistically, properly, the, the explanation, the term of Serbs. Pretty generic, by the way. So even here we don't find many many connections, there were many places, in fact, that had a similar name that quite likely had nothing to do with any Serb boy, Serbs, whatever. For example, Strabo mentions uh, that the river Xantas in Lycia was formerly named Serbus. Herodotus mentions a lake named Serbonis in Egypt. The lake was also mentioned as Serbonis by Strabo. But the question is, yeah, I mean, there were plenty of names of places. Uh, yeah, the, 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 you know, the root words seem to be pretty, pretty common. But what's the, you know, it had, of course, nothing to do with that. And even if it had, you know, just by scale, it, it hasn't. Because it's not that, for some reason, these places were to be called like that because there was a people with an identity that could be preserved and that you can find everywhere in places, by the way, that were ruled by other powers has nothing to do with that. Even if that mobility was a real thing in ancient times still uh, by the way I've never even seen any you know historiographer dedicating itself to to the issue of finding this name similarities right these are the kind of conspiratorial things that people do by I don't know uh, tracing just you know similarities be the connections between people just because they sound similar their names sound similar maybe if even if the notoriously the etymology of these names has nothing to do uh, with, with each other, or is this typical? And it's done. It, you have no idea, especially on YouTube, how many deranged uh, individuals come and say things that are not even critical. They're just stating all oh, their and and they're actually even very complex ideas that 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 they have put together in a in some in some fashion. They even know those names sometimes as. Not even I do, but th then you simply check what the, I don't know, the etymology is where you realize it had nothing to do with each other. We know perfectly what the etymology is, historically is, ex is explained, but somebody really loves to to live in a, I don't know, in, a, in an alienated world, in a fictional reality, whatever. This is nothing to do, again, I'm not talking about the Serbians, this is nothing to do with that. I'm talking about properly people humans in general, independently from, from any nationality. Now, the most important source, however, that eventually, and I'd say it myself, right, has been just portrayed as the most important, most proving, the most, the most sound to explain the, 
this complex idea, after all, of the migration of the Serbs from Central Europe into southwestern, uh, excuse me, the, the southwestern Balkans, um, is the uh, the De Cerimonis, right? In his book, De Cerimonis of the Byzantine Emperor Constantine the Seventh, nine hundred twelve, nine hundred fifty nine. Because in this work that collects. Uh, it, it talks really about the Byzantine imperial ceremonial, as also the title um, explains. But, you know, the Byzantines had this ethnographic bias they had to put in their ecumenic view and their, in their, the centrality of the empire. Of course, kind of a record of, of, of peoples that were in and or around and explaining their history, how they had ended up there. So this work is actually a bit anachronistic. It talks about places that didn't quite exist. For example, the team of Thessalonica um, that existed at the time of Constantine the Seventh, but not quite by the time he explains the Croats and the Serbs migrated in, Herac uh, in Heraclius times uh, within the empire's boundaries. Yet, archaeological evidence does at least uh, prove that important groups of... We can't really trace them as necessarily as... Slav, but there were the same people who lived there at the time, so they likely were, because this is also the point that archaeologically we can't really distinguish too much, not even properly the migration per se, but if we cross the documentary evidence, we, we know at least that there were some, for example, Prague uh, material culture pottery that we find around Thessalonican times that we know, um, in fact, some of these peoples were pushing from the north, it was mostly settling in areas like Macedonia, um, and this is, um, and uh, we, we, we see that the Prague culture there is the same one that existed in Central Europe around the areas of Lusatia, where, which, from which the Croats, the, the Serbs specifically, would have, would have come from. And so, of all the various Central and Eastern material cultures, we find something similar there, suggesting a connection between the area that was more or less the one that had been Great Moravia and the northwestern Balkans, where the Croats and the Serbs had settled. Um, he also provides with a, the source provides with a false etymology of the of uh, of Servus, so serf for the for the Serbs. Um, so it's like eventually the, the Slavs would have been called slaves like from the Latin clubs, but the etymology was still kind of the same one of, of Latin and Serbari had nothing to do with that, if anything, because, you know, other, I don't know, the Venetians made slave trade of the of the, the, the Croatians of these peoples on, on the Adriatic, on the Roma, they were the slaves, but frankly that was just a slur, not quite s s the meaning of Slava, which is glory and was pretty universally also what the entire world had believed um, in religiously, militarily at the time. Um, and what is interesting in the, the ceremonies is that not the, the emperor doesn't just talk about the Croats and the Serbs settling, allegedly called by Emperor Heraclius, in fact in the areas where Croats and Serbs would have eventually dwelled um, historically, and thus explaining how they had come there, how they had formed, which would have occurred during, in fact, a migration of some sort, probably connected to some trouble that was happening in the other Khaganate. It was just, in fact, um, between the Byzantine Empire and those central European areas populated by Slavs that, you know, these peoples crossed. The properly the, uh, the 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 source speaks of Turkey, because the the Byzantines called the Avars the Turks. And so you have an idea, even just here for the sake of example, how many people just completely use the term Turkey for, you don't know what, right? You know, so, sometimes I found some, this is yet connected to the Balkans, but I don't remember what was the thing, it was, was with the Bulgars that, you know, were even later maps that were even click holding, that were figuring kind of like how older times would have been and they were representing some peoples and, and areas with the name of the of the modern name as they were before, and so there are some irredentists and internationalists who say, "Look, 
you know, here this map says that in those times that the, our people was there. It has not because it migrated later. It has nothing to do with that. And they keep believing that. And you can't erase it from their mind because they just have decided that they must believe it in front of any possible sense or logic or evidence or scientific method just because it's them, right? And this is, again, it's dramatic, but we have to acknowledge that the world does work like this too. Now, again, the interesting thing about this list is that not just the Croats and the Serbs and the Rogen is mentioned, how they settled in the Byzantine Empire, which was probably autonomous rather than Heraclius calling them, but probably was still truly in an anti avar fashion. But there's also the name of two tribes in the East, the source says, that were the, named the Krevatades, the Krevatas and the Sarban, the Sarbani. And in, in the source one cannot but realize that these are a pair that is connected to the Croats and the Serbs. Krevatades and Sarban after you've just talked about the Croats and the Serbs, right, in the East. And so, you understand what the connection is there. Ancient sources like Pliny and Ptolemy says that there were the Serboi list, because for the Croats, this is not documented really, in the, in the north of the Caucasus. And somebody in the 10th century, in the Byzantine court, believed that, you know, at least had memory of the fact that these two peoples ex had existed and they suspiciously sound sim dramatically similar to Serbs of Croats, onomastically. So somebody would trace the connection between the two and this people's movements that we'll see uh, in a while. Right now, for for the record, the source specifies that the Krevatades, Krevatas, and Sarban, Sarbani were located in the Caucasus near the river Terek between Alania and Sanaria, which would reinforce also. The, at the time, the islands were still, like, part had migrated and scattered everywhere. Uh, the islands would serve as, they were so good at war that they served as bodyguards, literally, even, you know, in China under the Mongols. Every, they were globe trotters. They were amazing. You know, that mostly there is this idea that a relic of the islands would be the modern obsessions that seem to bear some linguistic and religious affinity with the ancient island culture. In any case, uh, this was would reinforce the idea of some kind of Sarmatian, if not properly of Alan origin. Oh, so th this is liked by the Iranian uh, theorists, I'll call it this way, of the Serbs. And again, I personally think it's a very fascinating idea because it makes a lot of sense. Uh, as we explain now, the the Avars were generally credited with the shepherding of the Slavs in the south, right? The major offensive led by the Avars on the Byzantine Empire were also, you know, backed by the Slavs that poured to imperial territory, etc. And there is this idea, that this hardcore, harshly authoritarian and brutally violent and er, solidly hierarchical peoples from, from, from the steppes would arrive as much more politically compact or at least, you know, morally loaded um, military elites to literally command this other very scarcely stratified socially and kind of still primitive peoples like the Slavs it would be just be the, the last ones of the great migrators and that would literally lead them into these other places. Uh, for the islands in Central Europe, if they were in, in any way connected with the Lusatians, with the white Serbs, with the white Croats, it's a matter of debate, and even for there, there is not much of an evidence, but we'll talk about that later. In any case, we have even a further correspondence, still in the 10th century, from an Arab geographer, who says that the Sarban tribe was also recorded in the Caucasus, which is quite interesting because it confirms the Byzantine one. We should point out that part of this Sarbani would have been allegedly connected to a Pashtun tribe. Today's dwelling, uh, I think they still exist, but you know, uh, they historically did for sure in between Afghanistan and Pakistan. That would have been another offspring of this 
Sarbani in the Caucasus. Again, it's not so strange either, because we know that those peoples in the Caucasus also moved still throughout late antiquity, early modern, uh, early medieval times, and even much later, east as well, in search of fortune, etc. So it's, it's also possible that there is this, this connection. So speaking of the central European location of the white Serbs and the white Croats, uh, we have seen that the De Administrando Imperio um, states that the Serbs originated, in fact, from the white Serbs who lived, quote, on the other side of Turkey. That is, again, what was understood at the time as, well, at the time actually as Hungary, right? You know, at this time the, the Magyars had already settled there, settled there, but the Byzantines were a bit classicistic and they had maintained the Turkic, the, the name Tur Turkoi in Greek for whoever settled there. Like, I don't know, they called the Franks the Celts or, you know, this kind of classicism was typical in you know, Byzantine literature because the word was immutable to them. That was the mindset. And, and specifies the area that they called Boiki, which stood for Bohemia. And uh, so probably there is a debate regarding whether it actually means Bohemia or whatever, but it does fit with, if anything, geographically with the macroscopic meaning. So it kind of makes sense, right? Also, it said that white Serbia, in fact, bordered uh, the Franks and white Croatia. On the whiteness, why they were called white, there's been some debates, uh, some connected to some colors that would correspond to the cardinal points in some Indo-European, you know, theory and uh, religious um, anthropological view. That is, the West would be white, the North black, the East green and the South red. And so from this kind of even their central so referential idea of the how you know the center of indo-european spread these peoples had gone west so they were called belly right so whites um and there is a further info that the source gives regarding uh the properly the split that occurred within the Serbs, as some white Serbs, the, the Sorbs, that in fact uh, exist, I mean, Sorabia, is, Lusatia is this area essentially across Germany and, and Poland, the historical region of Europe has corresponded to this, that the, the remained there, and the, uh, and the Serbs that properly migrated in the Balkans. And there goes the, the idea that there were uh, ruled respectively by two brothers that um, were in fact children of Derban who had ruled over this white Serbia um, before and these areas were somewhat under the the influence of the Avar Khaganate at the time just we know it as other Slavic tribes around and they had migrated in the area probably since uh, the early times. I mean, these of the Slavic migrations, we're talking about the, the, the 5th, the 6th century, right? We, we don't know, right? Some groups were, it's not that they had to, to move much, right? So some groups, as always, would have settled uh, in the area. Um, Dervan was the dukes, the duke of the Surbi, the Sorbs, um, properly. And so the split was some made more solemn because after all they were the children of the same father so that's the meaning saying it also reinforces the same origin all right uh, so while the uh the serbs what we call the serbs would go in the balkans the white serbs remained in the elbe region roughly and again the the serbs uh, the lusatian serbs um, uh, still exist in the area of uh, Lushitsa, Lausitz, uh, this region of eastern Germany. And some studies say that there might have been even um, an eastern Slavic origin of the Serbs, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Some con connected them to the Ante uh, in, in origin. 
it, it's possible as well because there seems to be a connection between the, the Slavs eventually migrated south in large part, in fact, as deriving from the Ante, they were overwhelmed by these other mostly Turkic movements coming from the steppes. They had established a sort of sort of realm that harassed Byzantine frontiers. Eventually they made a, an alliance with Justinian before the system crumbled. And however, this connection with the Serbs seems to have been debunked because it refers to a name that is not necessarily even connected with the Antes, but th with the tribe of the Severians that lived in somewhere exactly in the areas of today's northeast of, of Kiev. Uh, that a German geographer, I think around the 10th century, said, at least I don't, I don't remember what the etymology is, but you understand the similarity between, like, was something like Ser the Serbini or something that s sounds a bit like the Serbarians, but not necessarily was referred, in fact, necessarily to the Serbs of Lusatia and might have had to do with, with them because this author said uh, that there was, this was the, the largest of the Slavic uh, peoples from which all the others had stemmed from so we don't really understand that but he probably didn't have at least the name doesn't have to do with, with the Serbs in spite of the of the similarity but it's not even um, an issue here so as we understand the, the Serbs settled in the Balkans first in an area near Thessaloniki as the same the Administrando Imperi says. And then, however, expanded. They occupied uh, the areas around the rivers Stara, Ibar, Drina, and Lim. And this area s stretches across the modern uh, border region, of, in fact, of Serbia, Montenegro, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. In the process, naturally, the Serbs came to be, to, to mix at least with s s southern Slavs that were already there from previous times. Naturally, the, the pre-Slavic populations of the area that were a mix, as you know, of Celts, Romans, in parts Illyrians. The, uh, this is, uh, I mentioned Illyrians, this is the uh, thing also for Albanian nationalism that, no, uh, Albanians are Illyrians, no, we, careful careful okay <laughs> don't re refrain uh, but still again it's a complicated picture because we don't even know of this settlement right from an archaeological point of view we see there were peoples that were advancing they were under the price but do we have a tag that says these are the serbs from central europe these are the the southern slavs there are somebody else they were naturally a population and in this sense at least maybe the the not the ethno-nationalistic per se, but the general per autochthonous perspective is correct. Of course, there were other peoples living there, and they kind of were, like, in, in the, the mi every migration were absorbed, um, or better, most most of the cases actually absorbed the, the invaders. Yes, does this have to do with any Ser pre-existing Serbian political identity proven on a historical base? No, of course not. There is not. There is not. There is not even a single glimpse of evidence. Anything. Right, so instead, from early medieval times, we do see that there is a coalescence of, as we will see, probably, hopefully, in other videos, of, of a Serbian polity. It was kind of uh, eventually a state, etc. But this is really for for another video. We also know that Emperor Constantine the Third in 641, so just after. Uh, the, the settlement in the 30s under Heraclius transferred part of the Slavs that had settled in the Balkans that were a pain in, in the behind, of course, for, for the Byzantine administration, especially as far as they, they reached as close as Thessaloniki, from the Balkans and especially from the Vardar region that is in, is, is in today's Macedonia, where in fact we think that the Serbs had initially settled in part to Asia Minor, and in fact and this is probably also a powerful evidence, these migrants founded the city, were settled in what would be known as Gordo Serbon, right, which is supposed to maintain in the name the, the Serb uh, ethnonym. In fact, the place was also known as Gordo Serbon and Servokoria, which probably had that connection, and that reinforces the idea that the Serbs at that point had... <coughs> 
we're, we're present, right? We're present in the area. That at that point, we're a, a political reality, whatever these names actually corresponded to, because, as you know, these antonyms, and we've seen it before etymologically, are, are brutally generic, right? All these people on, on the move, it's not that they even had a sense of properly... Some of you asked me, but is it, is it correct to say Slav or Slavic? Because we don't, you have to think this. It, in, in, it, in historiographical convention, when we, we talk about the peoples per se, we tend to say, uh, I don't know, the Germans, not the Germanics. The Slavs, not the Slavic. When we say things like Germanic, Slavic, we mostly stress the fact as an adjective that surpasses the individual identity and has to do in fact with the the idea that during these migrations th none of these people was at even remotely close to ethnic purity they were all mixed with lots of other groups coming literally from everywhere uh, and even if there was this hegemonic um, culture this was not even meant to be really an identity per se like the germans the slavs mostly came to think themselves as such in an international scenario distinguished from other peoples only when they were literate and uh, uh, acculturated by essentially the Romans or the Byzantines that provided them with this categorical classification of the international peoples they, they didn't actually perceive themselves separately as such right uh, the, the first evidence of, of the Germans calling themselves Germans is only in the 6th century. Before, if, if your name is ethnonymically Hermann, German, men of the army, men spear, spearmen, or Slav, like just this uh, universal glory, that, that was just the universal language. I wouldn't even think that there was like a people that was not like them. Or uh, So it, it's, it's very complex. You, there, there is no such thing like a national identity attached to a universal idea that's simply the deny the, na the, the nation in that sense is the complete denial of the universal identity was the one connected to the to the absolute power that they were seeking so it's basically the denial is and that's the same reason why nationalism is a secularistic modernistic ideology today because it killed tradition and universalism it has nothing to do again it's a statistic leftistic revolutionary ideology it has nothing to do with any form of of european or traditional identity of, of any kind um, so here we come to the theories proper because the question there okay we, we have some Byzantine documentary evidence of the fact that by the first half of the 7th century there was a, a Serb people that had migrated there at least according to the Byzantines and that was even pushing uh, south uh, they are connected also with the other forts and it was not really uh, appreciated by the Byzantines we even deported them and called them still Serbs in, in, that, in that instance the problem is where did the original Serbs come from like assuming again that they came from Central Europe as we've seen and there is evidence of that ethnolinguistically toponomastically the Serbs are the Serbs are an actual historical people of Europe, there is even some archaeological evidence again of the fact that it was a connection between the northwestern Balkans and and the Prague culture of Central Europe. So again, we can't trace the migration because it's normal not to be able to trace a migration. Especially if the the numbers were not probably so large, like in this case, and especially if there were lots of other peoples roaming around, like eventually uh, here we are quite early still. Right, that the Bulgars would have arrived, that other peoples in the, in the Pannonian Plain. So, the, these peoples also were quite poor. We're talking about the seventh century. It's, it's, it's a moment of greatest em economical demographic contraction of the entire Europe. Uh, we have a an idea archaeologically of how people who lived there were like. So we know that there were people and what they did and what they were. Uh, but to to try to distinguish like somebody who had arrived from somewhere else. Is really impossible by that scale, right? When when you see the others coming in, you kind of have a good idea. It was this was a, a pretty large people by migration standards that bring something coming from very far away, and you can distinguish it. But if we're talking about Slavs in Central and Southern Europe, especially in small, in relatively small numbers, 
and there is not going to be much like we we don't know who was the Slav who arrived there for, for right uh, and even as we've seen this is valid in part for the same Slavs that had migrated uh, before there as southern Slavs and they would as also the, the Serbs would have become after they settled there so this doesn't mean however that there wasn't a movement right the, the problem is who were these Serbs and, and who were these Croats the white Serbs and white Croats in, in, in Central Europe now the most uh, positive theory is the Iranian one right so essentially stressing that the Serbs and the Croats were some kind of Sarmatian people probably even close to the islands this connection was made for the aforementioned uh, Serb boy people north of the Caucasus according to ancient sources we were specifically a Sarmatian more and probably an Alanian tribe and what is interesting is that would this would make this Alanian Serbs who could call them like that arriving in Central Europe actually even before the Slavs because the Alans were subdued by the Huns in the fourth century and the Huns cared about them because the the Alans as we've seen were terrific fighters were the, the very the very best around and they spread all over Europe right we know that they broke through the Rhine in 406 together with the Vandals the Burgundians they made a mess in Gaul they made a mess in Spain uh, some of them surely joined the Roman army as well they went in Britain probably the, the Arthurian legion is all connected to, to that story they could, the, the sword in the stone with the Sarmatian mounds of the heroes that stuck this you know swords in the, on the top as the alter ego of the people this 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 heavily armored warriors like fish scaled iron covered ultra heavily uh, in fact armored cavalrymen right that rejected this radically violently ultra elite aristocratic uh, warlike equestrian chivalric culture among the the Western Europe Indo-Europeans that had sedentarized in Europe by that time and that w would be at the root of some of the legions also early chivalry and this mystics etc and as far as Central Europe is concerned as you know we basically know nothing during the migration era like we have we rely exclusively on documentary sources that are pretty vague but not vague enough say not to be able to trace in fact some possible connections with the position of some Allen groups in Central Europe plausibly uh, at that time as we've seen I mean breaking into gold from from the Rhine they were in Central Europe dwelling there do we have the evidence of some Alans literally settled in the areas of Lusatia or even further east and south uh, Western Poland where in fact not just the Serbs but the Croats would have been no we have just the evidence that those areas were Slavicized but it's possible that if the some, some Alan clan or tribe had created maybe a local scenery and somewhat catalyzed this Slavic migration and somewhat brought it under which is what the theory basically suggests given that these were still Slavs right there is not much an, of an Iranian Indians among them as a hegemonically right so even the Iranian theory stresses the the Iranian identity from a political not from an ethnic necessarily speaking point but at least in terms of demic consistency it's not that bad and it's plausible the Longbirds for example were just there they had been under the Huns themselves and for them we speak perhaps with some excess but still effectively even given their material culture that is very steps like of a Sarmato Germanic people also because in fact all these peoples that had been pushed west by the Huns were from uh, from the German Germanic perspective they were Sarmatians right and they were integrated importantly in some of these Germanic confederacies 
uh, still also retaining part of their ethnic identity as properly Iranians, not necessarily as Germans, just gradually being absorbed by that. We know that also because the Longobards, uh, before migrating to Italy, were already seeing Slavs entering their own territory. And fundamentally, you know, we, we do know that were Slavs that the, the Longobards themselves brought south. Right, there are some Italian graves, Longobard times, that actually show some, you know, genetic evidence that goes pretty close to modern poles. The the same thing may have happened with a much more brutally authoritarian people like an Iranian one that was all soaked in this ultra in uh, super mystic exaltation of the warrior and the and rule of command, the universal power. So that the Serbs may have, as a matter of fact, been, as the Croats, just one of these groups that had managed to to bring, like the Avars would do, right? Uh, this this masses of Slavs together with them, which doesn't mean it's necessarily a master serf relation, right? There were naturally powerful Slavic clans that would join, would would marry into this aristocracy, so. This is all pretty obvious, and this would be the the general idea, right? And there is much speculation about this because we li we know literally nothing. It stops there. Some have said after the Hunnic leader Attila died, 453, the Alanian Serbia presumably became independent and ruled in the eastern of the river Zale over the Slavic population. But let's say. We are. We don't know that, right? Um, it's just an hypothesis. If we assume again that really there was a group coming from the Caucasus, and that had already been there by the way before even the same Slavs, which you can't really know. Of course, if they lived there, they they underwent the same political events that are known, generally speaking, for the area that are suggested by other peoples. That lived around, we have traces of that, of Hunnic influence that also engineered further that kind of autocratic model, um, etc. It might as well be possible that the Alans were Slavicized instead. That is to say, if, if there was any Alan in Central Europe, eventually the Slavs might have arrived like a human tide of some sort, even. You know, figuratively, because it's not that there was a pretty dense demographic population. The Alans, generally speaking, were a quite successful people that spread all over Europe, but of course used their power to just um, properly take over the richest places, like Gaul, Spain, etc. But it's true also that they were kind of fragmented, because in part they had been destroyed by the Huns or at least subjugated. So they're also their individualistic mindset may have favored their fragmentation, so that we, we, we barely find anything like an Alanic power, if not in the Iberian Peninsula, before they were absorbed finally by the Vandals and the Visigoths. So we don't really have a, a, an Alan state of some sort, aside from the core land of the, uh, north of the Caucasus. It also went depleted demographically because of so many of these peoples that left. But yes, it's possible in this sense that some Alans had remained in Central Europe for some reason. And that eventually makes with the Slavs in some form, in some ratio that we can't really understand. In the area of Lusatia slash White Serbia, some deformed human skulls were discovered. Um, these were sometimes connected to the Alans, sometimes to the Huns. In general, it speaks of the presence of some steppe people in the area. Uh, of course, the, these peoples would imitate each other by a certain degree. There were also some Germans who deformed their skulls like the Hunnic way, but uh, this is not, again, a tangible proof of anything. We just see that it's the context is plausible for some kind of presences, right? And this would be it. Um, is there any consideration we can make on the base of, I don't know, the the, the the fact that the Serbs and the Croats existed eventually in, in, in the northwestern Balkans as a polity on their own um, and the some kind of pre-existing Alan 
Alanian compaction, let's say, uh, that would be characteristic of their spirit, their tradition. Well, it's also speculative. But definitely the fact that the Serbs and the Croats exist to this day, if, if this is the, uh, the, the origin, their true origin, at least geographically, the movement from Central Europe to there, well, it still speaks of some groups that were probably cohes that weren't just a a mass like like we see most of the Slavs being really like there were some Slavic mm. states in part we've seen the Ante etc but let's say in, in the seventh century we see much less of that we see mostly clans like the seven tribes that eventually would be the base also for the same Bulgars to create the, the first empire etc but it's usually Slavs really advanced in relatively small pockets. This idea has been stressed maybe too much also by a socialistic, actually communistic, Stalinistic ideology it wanted the Slavs to be this kind of peaceful um, human tide that worked the land and just expanded because of the workers and, and all this with no differences, etc. But some, yes, some Slavs were pretty hierarchical and aristocratic and oligarchic in nature but still compared to the hours of other peoples they were eventually brought under like the Bulgars etc well yes they do seem like more that the, the previous model tendentially so again since the 7th century was literally the, the darkest hour of Europe in many ways and this um, uh, uh, Derban's children were also on the frontier with with the avars and so that weren't particularly gentle souls and had the the guts not to say something else to just cross our territory to settle in byzantine land with all the odds the, the problems and even if there had been some machination with heracles etc to to facilitate the migration was unlikely but there is some kind of hardcore moral political let's say moral strength and political cohesion there that you want to consider. Do we want to trace this to some progressed Alanian ident world-like identity? Again, speculation, but it's worth being noticed, in my opinion. And naturally, th the matter is complicated also by the fact that um, these peoples were pretty similar to each other. So we don't know to which point, eventually, just the geography the history would differentiate clearly the Serbs and, and the Croats but as you know Serbo-Croatian is basically the same language there is a, a dramatic proximity between the two people so um, naturally the, there were also pre-existing peoples there that were probably homogeneous uh, coming from the same places that they installed themselves on so that, that contributed to the homogenization but uh, again at the same time this cohesion is worth being noticed and um, and the fact that the entity was maintained all along just points at some kind of pre-existing political compaction and you know sense of themselves now passing to the autochtonic theory there isn't really much to tell um, the um, there's simply the idea that the Serbs lived there as you know as Serbs before the 7th century for some reason that is not practically explained um, and this goes even before the 7th century say before even the same Slavic migrations of the 6th so this is treated mostly as pseudoscience and again the only answer that I ever gotten from somebody was okay maybe it's not a specialist but you know was just defending the idea is why are you know all the people must have been there before and not us right it's difficult not to see the competition there with all we're not supporting sponsors of genocide or ethnic cleansing we know pretty well what happened just a few decades ago uh, in the Balkans um, and uh, in fact it is true that the, the mindset there is is from from every side is hysterically no we were here before and, and the obvious re it's, I mean the, the reason is obviously political it's microscopic just it has nothing to do with history though right it's just like a, as a tool that you 
use disgustingly from, from both sides to say, you know, as if it even mattered that somebody was there before. It, it, it's, you know, even more disgusting by, by a certain degree, considering the proximity of, of the violence to those people who say, ah, but Native Americans inhabited uh, the, the continent before. Who does give a fuck about people who exterminated, raped, and enslaved each other all the freaking time, stealing each other's land all the freaking time? You know, who the hell cares? Seriously. Right? And this is not the case of the Balkans. Who, by the way, against uh, common prejudice, actually didn't have historically a history of ethnic violence before the uh, essentially the 20th century. Right? This is important to stress because actually most of Europe before you know the 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 age of nation state actually was a good example of ethnic coexistence by some degree, right, at least considering, you know, the horrors of the 20th century, when, in fact, there is not really, uh, this thing were born after, also because of ideologies such as fascism, communism, and, and have a few to do with history, in fact, anything with, as we've seen, European tradition, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but, in fact, all these considerations shouldn't have anything to do with something that was happening in the 7th century or before, right? So what do you want to say? The Serbs existed there because of Servinum in Pannonia. Where's the evidence? Do you have any proof of any kind, archaeologically, historically? Zero, right? So it's really pseudo science. And again, if you want to, to revel on the half full, half empty glass of the fact that there were people living there from millennia and more before, well, you know, congratulations, dumb fuck, you discovered that, you know, there were other peoples inhabiting areas everywhere uh, for a very long time, and how does this has anything to do with political identities that were, you know, engineered for centuries um, afterward, like, it should really be, be seen and proven, right, if you have any evidence, of course you don't. We all descend from groups that were here before the ones that we call ourselves like, right? But this has nothing to do with the fact that we were called like that before. Like, how dumb can you be to believe something like this? I mean, it's utterly disgusting, and it's kind of a waste of time. There is yet another hypothesis that connects the uh, Serbs to a people, the Sporoi, uh, named by Procopius in the, we are in the mid 6th century, that wouldn't be other than the old name of Diante and the Sclaveni. These were two early Slavic branches, especially the, the former having a lot to do, at least considering the some of ethnogenetic studies have been done with the southern Slavic migrations in the Balkans and that probably in fact were made up an important amount of people also in the same area that were eventually settled by the, the Serbs. This theory however says no, the, the Serbs in this sense existed kind of before there were, there were um, uh, a people that had already settled by the 6th century and, um, and there would be a connection. Th this theory even implies, at some point, the um, a possible connection still with the Central European origin, because in um, um, the 